Lamb of God, you shed for me your life upon a blood-stained tree. Your life for mine, love redefined, an offering, a ransom release. You gave so much, O Lamb of God, just as I am, I come. The doubts I have, the pain I feel, when at your feet I humbly kneel. You take it all, both great and small, give freedom, forgiveness and peace. I have the choice, O Lamb of God, just as I am, I come. Lamb of God, I hear your voice, and hearing, know I have a choice to make a start within my heart, a willingness to journey by faith. You ask no more, O Lamb of God, just as I am, I come. By waters still, through fire and storm, your love continues to transform, and with that call, you welcome all. No barriers now, no limits, just grace. No more excuses, Lamb of God. Just as I am, I come. Please stand for our first hymn, O Sacred Head, Sore Wounded. announcements 
Um, there's food after, bread and soup being made, and you're all welcome. A vast array of choice. So please stay, and it's through the large hall. You can get there through that door or this door. I am sending my apologies. Uh, we have a group of 12 coming uh, to the manse, uh, but uh, I'm sure this will be better. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. No, no, hang on. No, uh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> right, we move on. At the back of the uh, room, there's leaflets about what the Easter message is, if you want to take them and give them out. They're uh, succinct and easy to read. The children, you're very welcome to stay in in this morning's service. And um, uh, Nathan, who is our speaker, is a dad, so he doesn't mind noise. If you do want to leave at any point, there's a little creche next door with some toys out and an overflow screen for you to carry on watching. But please, uh, feel free to stay for the whole um, meeting. You're also welcome on Sunday at 11 a.m. to our Easter Sunday service, Resurrection Sunday, here and online. And we welcome Dr. Nathan Monday, who is giving the message this morning. He's a friend of our church. He came and spoke on St. David last year, and we've worked with him with um, um, Christian Aid. And now he's the Heath um, Evangelical Church uh, Minister Assistant. Assistant Minister. Um, I think that's it. So, let's worship our living God in prayer. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, Lord Byron said, if God isn't like Jesus, he should be. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus is Lord. I thank you that he is your heartbeat. He's your word. He's your icon. He's your image. He's your message. And he joins us with open, bleeding arms. And he says, I'm here for you this morning. I love you. Follow me. Turn to me with anything you're going through. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus has died on the cross and dismantled death so that we may go free. I thank you, Lord, that our sins can be completely forgiven and taken down to the pit when put on Jesus. I pray for anybody who feels condemned this morning and has the weight on the w of the world on their shoulders. I pray that they would know the burden-freeing joy of trusting in the God of the cross and of the resurrection. I thank you for the gift of life that you offer all of us this morning. I thank you for your promise that you will be with us whatever we face in life and that we can trust you. And we know we can trust you because of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have loved us to hell and back. Thank you that this is the living God who is Father, Son, and Spirit. I pray for all of the churches preaching the gospel this morning, that your Holy Spirit would anoint the message and that this country would be saved again and know the joy of the gospel of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be with us, Lord, as we sing. Please help us engage our hearts from the youngest to the oldest. May this be a life-changing meeting this morning. And we pray for those who are too sick to be here. We pray for a special holy spiritual blessing and your fatherly love drawing near them in their homes or their hospital beds this morning. We pray all of these things in the name of the wonderful Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Right, children, I think we got a memory verse this morning. You know it already, but we'll start with praying with sign language. Oh, I've got to go over here for the camera. Um, although I'm aware there are some expert sign language people in the room, but I'm going to do it anyway. Good. Copy me, everybody. Let's pray. Good. Morning. Boys. Girls. Lovely to see you again. Thank you, God, for Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to wash away my sins. Amen. Should we do a memory verse? 
memory verse about that message? Right, you know it because uh, this is the one we get wrong with the timing. So I'll go first. It's not easy, you know. Right, here we go. Right, I'll, I'll go first. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is where it goes wrong. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. <laughs> it's not easy. I got, never mind. I got to think of loads and how to fit them in the tunes. Right. So this is about God who put all of our sins onto his wonderful son. And then his wonderful son gives us all of his righteousness and his sonship. And it's a great swap. All of my bad on him. All of his good on us. It's the best message in the world. See, it is. So, here we go. Ready? We'll have a run-up with two. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5, to, 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 to 21. Ah, not bad, not bad. Thank you, not bad, not bad, not bad. Right, I hand back to uh, Richard Barrett. Thank you. Shall we put the drum kit away? This is the message of the cross, that we can be free to live in the victory and turn from our sin. My precious Lord Jesus, with sinners you died, for there you revealed your love and you laid down your life. This is the message of the cross, that we can be free to lay all our burdens here at the foot of the tree. The cross was the shame of the world, but the glory of God. For Jesus, you conquered sin and you gave us new life. So please stand for our next hymn, which carries on this theme, Oh, to see the dawn of the darkest day. <laughs>
Let us pray. You were a man of suffering, acquainted with grief, loved and despised in equal measure. You understand humanity, know our feelings, love us despite the people that we are. When we, like Peter, deny you by word or action, forgive us. When we, like Judas, are tempted to follow a different path, forgive us. When we, like those in the crowd, allow you to be crucified, forgive us. Bring us to the foot of the cross to stand next to the one who, looking into your eyes, declared, surely this is the Son of God. Lord Jesus, from the beginning you knew the final outcome, watched as the jigsaw pieces were slotted into place, saw the significance of every moment. As your body was anointed with oil at the table of Simon the leper, <coughs> the picture was becoming clearer, not only in your eyes, but to an unknown woman and one of your closest friends. Judas sensed that this was his moment, sacrificing trust that had been so freely given on the altar of selfish gain for his 15 allotted minutes of fame and 30 pieces of silver. The woman recognized the moment. She gave generously, unselfishly, a costly gift freely offered, a fragrant sacrifice of perfume and love remembered forever in your heart. And as Judas slipped away unnoticed, your disciples saw none of this, failed to see the significance of the moment. Two sacrifices, one of trust and one of love. But you noticed, Lord, as you notice each day, our sacrificial offering and betrayal. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May we join together to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is Man of Sorrows, What a Name, for the God, Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a saviour.
reading for our Good Friday service is Luke 23, verses 26 to 49. Um, in your pew Bibles, page 1060 or 61. Luke 23, 26 to 49. As they led him away, they seized. put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then... They will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine and vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly. For we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth today, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this saw this sight, what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. going on here. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the warm welcome, and I bring you greetings uh, from Heath uh, down the road. Um, last week, I was listening to a song in Cafe Nero. I'd had um, my birthday, my 31st birthday, and for a gift, I was given Cafe Nero vouchers. So, uh, Cafe Nero, so if you ever, you know, want to treat me, Cafe Nero is the place I like. And something came on the, you know, the speaker. Steeler's wheel stuck in the middle with you. The 1973 classic song. I'm not going to sing it. I don't, well, I don't know why I came here tonight. 
I've got the feeling that something ain't right. You see, I'm a poetic fellow. I'm so scared in case I fall off my chair, and I'm wondering how I'll get down the stairs. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to my right. Do you know what's coming next? Very good. I'm impressed. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Now, you might be thinking that's not an Easter song, and you'd be right. Stuck in the middle with you. Stuck is an old English word. I, I studied English, like your pastor, and it means, uh, in the older sense, to stab or to peer someone in place. Think of a pig, you know, in the medieval feast. I, I don't think you're having pig today, you're having soup, aren't you? Um, and when you know what that means, I don't know, that song last week was starting to play on my mind. Look at the 33rd verse of Luke 23. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right, one on his left. So very briefly today, I'm going to use the lyrics of that song so that we can come closer to Calvary. I've got the feeling that something ain't right. That's what we're looking at first. One on his right, one on his left, secondly. And then finally, I'm going to change the final line of that song. Not stuck in the middle with you, but stuck in the middle for you, okay? So I've got the feeling that something ain't right. Come with me to that place, uh, Golgotha, isn't it? Uh, a famous place which even the atheist knows about. Uh, outside the city wall, are you with me? Let's, let's walk out the gate. Uh, the rubbish dump of Jerusalem, a hopeless place of execution. The creaking crosses, the eerie hush that ensues whilst humanity takes the breath of another human taking the breath of human, humanity sinking to its lowest. I've got the feeling something ain't right. And the name of the place is Calvary, isn't it? Golgotha. The locals call it Golgotha, uh, from the Greek cranion, Calvary. The place of the skull, it's a place of death, Death is a horrible thing, isn't it? It's not called the last enemy for nothing. So we've got three crosses there. We've got the man on the middle cross, three men. And the account, doesn't it, describes these two figures, not so much jokers and clowns, but what does the Bible tell us? They're called kagurgos, they're criminals. They're evildoers, they're sinners. Do you know what sin is? Yeah. They're rebels. The other accounts calls them robbers or terrorists. Take your pick. That in itself is a fulfillment of an old prophecy from Isaiah 53 that said that Christ would be, do you remember this? Would be numbered with the transgressors. The law keeper is treated as a law breaker. I've got the feeling something ain't right. Did you notice in our reading when Owen was taking us to that place, it got dark in the middle of the day. There's an eclipse coming soon, isn't there, in America? Dark at noon, not three minutes, three long hours. And darkness in the Old Testament was always a sign that God was judging. God was angry. The creator seems to be donning on its funeral clothes because something ain't right, you see? Take note, Park End. This is no mere death those years ago. This is no normal day. The perfect, spotless Lamb of God 
The Son of God is dying the death of the criminal and the lights are going out. I've got the feeling something ain't right. But let's zoom in, secondly, shall we? Jokers to the left of me. Clowns to the... I've, I've got the song wrong already. I knew this would happen. <laughs> but I'm not going to sing it. Who's right in this? He's a doctor. Dr. Luke. He enjoys telling his stories using tools. Have you noticed that? If you remember Sunday school, you've got Mary and Martha, the two sisters. You've got two pregnant women at the beginning of the story, Mary and Elizabeth. You've got, let's, I'm, I'm not going to do a quiz. <laughs> two people come in to the temple. And then we've got two sinners here, haven't we? We've got two deaths. And there'll be two conversations, like we saw in our reading, two decisions, two destinies. This scene, my friends, is history, but it's also your story. The one on the left or the one on the right? How do they react to the man in the middle? How do you react to the man? on the middle cross. Well, let's look at the first one, shall we? First man. This guy's guilty. This guy ends up a real clown, doesn't he? Because Jesus is there. And verse 38 tells us that this man railed against Christ, shouting, didn't he? Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. Bitter content. Are you here today? Is man number one in the pew? We get an insight here into his heart. He probably lived a dark life. He probably done evil things. And yet he comes face to face with the remedy. The doctor's given us the remedy here of everything. But there's no reverence. There's no repentance turning here. No, there's just sarcasm and contempt. Familiar to you? See, people want help from God, don't they, when it's convenient. They want the practical help. But in their heart, they won't have that man rule over them. Is that you this morning? Even though in the Bible, he does ask Jesus to deliver him. He does not believe in his heart. I don't know you this morning. I don't know your past. I don't know what you're thinking now, whether you're looking forward to soup or the, the, the wonderful feast in the manse. I don't know if you're one of the 12 guests. 12, lovely number. Uh, <laughs> I don't know you. But what I do know you is that sin is a problem for us all. And if your sin is undealt with, you're not ready to die this morning. And if you're not ready to die, you know the old saying, you're not ready to live. Are you like that thief, a clown of a man? Another recorder called Matthew tells us that the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him at the beginning in the same way. They were really jokers and clowns at the beginning of the story. You wouldn't think that you'd think that'd be the last thing they'd be doing when they're nailed to what the Romans called the unlucky tree. But something changed with one of them, didn't it? You see, by nature, we're all rebels. We're all clowns, if you like. We won't have him rule over us. But you see, one of them would die alone. And he'd go into the dark. Is that your destiny? Let's move to the other side, shall we? Man number two. I don't know what changed. Maybe it was Jesus' gentle manner. How he spoke to his mother from the most unlikely of places. He felt sorry for his mother. I don't know. Maybe it was the writing that was plastered above his head. Something changed in one of the criminals. 
something happened. He knew that the man on the middle cross shouldn't be there. He, at last, he couldn't listen to the other guy. If you've got your Bible, look at verse 40 to 41. There's a change. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. What we're seeing in this verse, my friends, is what we say in Carmarthenshire. You may have noticed I'm not a Cardiff boy. <laughs> He's wising up. And the most wise person, John Calvin tells us, is a man who knows himself, but doesn't finish there, but who starts to know who that man on the middle cross really is. Yeah? He's wising up. This man never went to Sunday school. He never uh, studied theology. But he did know he wasn't ready to die. Comparing himself to the man in the middle, he knew he was in danger. And just in time, just at the end of his time, what does he say? Remember me? Remember me? When you come into your kingdom... Do you notice what he says exactly? Jesus, remember me. This is one of the very few occasions that someone calls Jesus by his name in the Gospels. Jesus, remember me. Do you know what Jesus means? Joshua or Yeshua, salvation, savior, remember me. Back in the Bethlehem story, some of you would have dressed up like shepherds. Some, I can see a few wise men and a few unwise men. No, no, enjoy it. <laughs> I'm, I wonder if anyone was a Herod here. But do you remember the words of the angel to Joseph? This is a very rare thing where a parent doesn't get to pick the child's name. You shall call his name Jesus. Why? Do you remember? I can hear whispers. For he will save his people from their sins. That's the best news ever. Because your sin, if it's undealt with, is a problem for you this morning. But this thief, he didn't know his Bible. He wasn't a Calvinistic, Methodist, Presbyterian, who went to Sunday school, Band of Hope. No, he simply called on his Savior, didn't he? He simply said, remember me, remember me. So we're coming now to our final point. Something ain't right. I can't remember the song now. Something ain't right here, isn't it? <laughs> You've got the clowns to the left and right, but when the really wise is up, the thirdly, here I am, stuck in the middle for you. Stuck in the really original old English means someone who's pinioned down for you. The guy said, remember me, didn't he? And Jesus said, yes, I will. Jesus answered him, verse 43, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Again and again in this chapter, we hear words, king, kingdom. And the dying thief would have seen the inscription above his head. And in a few moments, he wouldn't believe his eyes because he'd be safe. He'd be secure. Are you safe this morning? Do you know where you're going? When my grandfather passed away, he was grabbing my hand, forgive the personal illustration, and he said, I'm safe. I'm safe. That's what this is all about, you know. It's about a king who wants to bring you home. He wants you home with him, you see. 
Who is this man? His name is Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, isn't he? He came into the darkness. He interrupted your darkness. He lived a perfect life. He was kind to the loner. He spoke sign language to deaf people, telling them that he was doing it in the name of the Father. He breathed uh, life. He made people better. He fed the poor. He dined with the outcasts. He was good with women. He was really kind to children, but he's the king. Only the king of kings can grant you eternal peace this morning. The song says, doesn't it, here I am. And you know in the Bible what I am means. I am that I am. He is God. But he's a man. And they killed him. He was taken to this hill, the dump. The Son of God was cut off. And some of you are already thinking, when is this Welshman going to shut up? You see, he was bearing every wrong thing you've ever done. My sin and my death. Did you notice what we just sang? Guilty, vile, and helpless we. Spotless, Lamb of God was he. Full atonement, can it be? Can you say this this morning, hallelujah, my Savior? He was dying in my place. Here I am, stuck in the middle for you. He took what I deserve, the wrath of God upon himself. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you, for you, whatever you want to put, he's there for you. His blood washes me clean. Here I am, stuck in the middle for you. And he invites you to paradise when you die. Here I am, stuck in the middle for you. That's real Christianity. Not just do good, although that's important too. Here I am, the good shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. Christ deserves a response this morning. Christ deserves your attention. For he is Messiah, the anointed one who proclaims liberty to the captives, who heals the brokenhearted and comforts you who are mourning. So to end, Good Friday, these Gwener a Groglis, I'm not speaking in tongues, I'm speaking Welsh, the Gwener a Groglith is when we read Llith a Grog, we read about the cross. Because on that cross we see the mighty Christ, the mighty Christ, who didn't stay on the cross, by the way. Come back Sunday for part two. The mighty Son of God became a curse for you. And you know what they did? They stretched out his hands, didn't they? And that is the the eternal symbol of here I am, stuck, pierced in the middle for you. All, you know that hymn, to finish now, all you that pass by, because you are passing by this morning, you're passing by the cross. Which one are you? Are you the clown? (laughs) Are you the arrogant Jewish religious person? Are you the believing Jewish person? Are you the ladies who went with him all the way? All you that pass by to Jesus draw nigh to you. Is it nothing that he should die? My ransom, my peace. Do you know it? You're surety he is. Come come see. If ever there was love, or sorrow rather, like this, if you forget anything this morning, remember the Lord Jesus Christ was stuck in the middle for you, for his name's sake. Amen. Well, shall we, do I announce the hymn? Oh, yeah, yeah, is that right? Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) You could tell I, I, I...
I, I'm not, I'm new. Uh, we'll sing our next hymn together, A Debtor to Mercy Alone of Covenant, Mercy I Sing. Shall we worship the Lord together? Let's sing. <laughs> Thank you that in the death of Christ, we can say with Pantacellin, death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side, songs of praises I will ever give to thee. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Jesus, for taking our sin. And Lord, we remember you even today, and we thank you that darkness could not overcome you. He arose, and we look forward to that in a few days' time. And now, may the grace of our conquering, loving Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit dwell and be with you now and until we meet again and forevermore. And all the people say, Amen. <laughs>
knows he saves are his delight. Christ will hold me fast, precious in his holy sight. 